Welcome back, everybody. Hopefully, everybody had a pretty good weekend. I can definitely say myself I've had quite an eventful weekend, especially with this language. Um, so before we even get into what we're going to be talking about in the video today, uh, I just want to kind of talk to you guys about where I am with the language and the YouTube series. So as I said, I kind of had a pretty eventful weekend. Uh, this weekend, I got a lot of work done. If any of you guys are following the language, I'm sure you've seen the recent commit that I've done. It's a pretty big one. Um, so this is my 24th pass on the compiler rewrite. And the virtual machine testing or the virtual machine programming has started. So that's pretty exciting. Um, that basically means that I'm far enough along in the compiler to start working on the virtual machine again. So language is making really good progress, which also means there shouldn't be any lags on the YouTube tutorial side because I was kind of fearing I was going to potentially have to delay the YouTube series and just stop doing videos but I was able to pull together all the code that I needed to get everything to work and for it to be in a decent state so I can show you guys also in this commit you can kind of see here um, I finished parsing expressions um, so specifically this is talking about binary expressions um, but I basically finished parsing expressions in the language which would have also potentially either delayed or completely stopped the YouTube videos altogether. So that's really good news. I see some of you guys watch my videos pretty often, almost as soon as they are posted every couple of days. So I definitely didn't want to stop the YouTube series. So I want to show you guys another picture. This is something that I made a couple days ago, and I think it accurately depicts the timeline of how I've been developing this language as a whole and my experience thus far. Um, so I'm going to go here and I'm going to zoom in. Whoops. So if I zoom in here, you can kind of see this is a arbitrary graph that basically lays out the timeline for the language. So you can see here we have our lines of code. So as your lines of code go up, the amount of time it takes to finish the language and the complexity increases. Um, so of course, I mean, this is pretty straightforward, but you guys can see here that I have little events that kind of happen along the way. And as you can see here, there's a couple of them. So like building the front end, setting up the back end, building the virtual machine. And basically what this graph represents is you start off very small. You start off writing the tokenizer, the parser, and then you start building the back end part of the compiler. And then it starts to get really hard, like when you start to build the virtual machine for the first time, and then it just plateaus. Um, and this is kind of an interesting period because during this period, I'm still building the virtual machine, but I've kind of gotten a handle on things. Like once I get to this point, I'm saying, okay, well, I think I have a pretty good idea about how my language works. And, you know, I think I kind of understand what I need to do. And, oh shit, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. So usually have this like ramp up where you get to a point to where you have to stop building the compiler and start building the virtual machine but then you have to start building the compiler again and then you have to basically build both the compiler and the virtual machine at the same time and it's it's really challenging we'll get into a lot of this later but if you look at this graph here right you can see all these different events and they all signify very important milestones in building your language but if you look down here, you can see it says building the front end. And this is basically where we are <laughs> in the graph. So we have a lot of work to do. And this is one of the reasons why I basically decided to do a video every other day, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, it would take me probably three years to show you guys everything here. So, and it probably still will, even with me posting a video every couple of days or so. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys this graph. I thought it was pretty interesting. This is, like I said, I've been building this programming language now for about six years, and I've rebuilt the language from scratch dozens of times. So I would say, in my experience, this graph is pretty accurate. But yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Uh, so let's kind of get into what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, as you can see from the thumbnail, we are going to be talking about enum declarations. So I remember, uh, like the last video, I kind of talked about we were pretty much done, and all we need to do after we parse enums is we need to parse expressions. So before I get into the logic for how to parse a enum declaration, let me just kind of note where all the spots you need to put it are at. So first, of course, we can see we have it in our parse function here. Uh, this is going to be the highest level because, of course, enums can be created at global scope. Um, we also want them to be created inside of classes. So I'm going to do a 
search here. Um, of course, you want to put your parse enum in your parse all function. So that way, if you don't know what you're processing or if you're put in a weird spot in your parser where you're trying to parse one thing, but it turns out that maybe the user made a syntax error. After that, we have, did I skip something? After that, we have our class block. So of course, you want to be able to put enums in classes. And then finally, I think that's it. Yep. Okay. So as you guys can see, it's in uh, the is enum declaration function is being called inside of the parse function at the high level, parse all, and finally parse class block. So just make sure you put the code that I'm going to be showing you guys today in those spots. All right. So let's kind of get into parsing an enum declaration. So first you're going to want to create your is method as usual. You guys know what this is. Um, you want to check for enum. That's going to be the syntax here. Also, I know I've said this before, but make sure you update your keyword function. So is keyword, uh, make sure you update this function here and you put in, you know, all of the other keywords that I've been mentioning before. Um, just make sure you keep that updated. Definitely don't forget that. I've had several times when I was building my language where I forgot to update that function and it caused bugs. So just keep that in mind. Um, so once you've determined that the current token is an enum declaration, then you can parse your enum declaration. And after that, you want to create, of course, our enum declaration AST. So you want to create that. And then you want to do your normal access type processing. So you want to add your access types. You want to free them up. Immediately after that, you're going to want to parse an identifier. So here's going to be the syntax for enum. So we're going to have an enum. Let's say this is color. And we're going to have several things in there. So we can have red is equal to 0x0, zero zero, white is equal to 0x1, zero and so on and so forth. And you can just kind of have whatever. Yep. And I spelled white wrong. Nice. Um, okay, so this is going to kind of be the general format here. So you have your enum, then your identifier, and then your enum block. So if we look here, we can say expect an identifier. And then let's start looking to see how we process enums. So when we're parsing enums, we want to, of course, create a enum identifier list. And that's going to represent all of the enums inside of your enum block. Now, why is it not called enum block? Uh, I have no idea. So there's your answer. But um, And after that, you want to expect your left block and you want to parse an enum identifier. Now, this isn't a standard block, so you can't just call the parse block function because that's not going to work here. We have special requirements. So we're going to need to parse an enum identifier. What that represents is that represents simply a identifier with a value, basically. So this is basically represented as a variable. When we get to the back end uh, parsing these, these are basically going to, like the compiler is effectively going to turn this enum color into class color, which is going to have a base class of enum which enum, by the way, that is going to be, this is a file that's in my standard library, which represents the wrapper class for, or it acts as like the base class for enum. So you can do things like get all of the values, um, get the actual ordinal, which is the physical hard-coded value of the enum, as well as get the name of the enum. So there's going to be tons of support for that. So our compiler is going to create a class of color, base of enum, and it's going to say public static red red of type var is equal to 0x0 zero zero. and it's going to do the same thing with white and it's going to say 0x1 of course we put our semicolons here so this is basically what the compiler is going to resolve this information as so this is kind of why we need to create our own custom formatting here so that it'll be a lot easier for us to process it on the back end um, so in our enum identifier, we need to create an AST of an enum identifier, expect the actual identifier, and then if the next token is equal to equals, then we expect equals and we parse an expression. Um, so that's pretty straightforward. You guys can kind of see that here. Um, so here I'm going to get rid of this code. But you guys can kind of see here, we have our red variable, we have our equal sign, and then our expression. So if we did something like this, um, you can also have enums that don't have a value, and the compiler will have to dynamically generate a random value for this enum. And once you parse your enum identifier, we can scroll back up to here, we're going to have our normal loop. 
So this is basically how we're going to process having multiple enums. So we're going to basically say if the next token is equal to a comma, then we want to expect that comma and then we want to parse another enum identifier. And then we want to basically go back up to ref pointer, um, which this is actually a bad name for this. Basically you want to say p enum identifier. And that basically just means parse. So here I'll do this. I'll just edit this live. So basically you want to create a label that's called parse enum identifier. And you want to do that now. I mean, this is the name of a function. So I'm going to actually not do that. Um, so I'm going to say p enum identifier. I know this is like a terrible name. You guys know I'm not good with names. So this is no surprise. But you basically just want to have a way to jump back up here so that way you can peek the comma. Now, a better way of doing this, you could just say while. You could do a while loop and say while the next token is equal to a comma. You can just keep doing that. I've done that in other places, I think. I don't know why I do this here, but yeah. Once you do that, then you expect a uh, closing brace. Now, I expect a semicolon for enums, which is really stupid. You know what? I'm going to remove that. That's unnecessary. Um, so I'm going to delete that. So yeah, so that's all you want to do. So this is basically how you parse an enum block. Um, enums are pretty simple things to process. They're not that complicated. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for this video today, guys. Okay, so I actually just realized I stopped filming and I forgot to show you guys how the actual AST output looks. So let's kind of do that. I'm going to do a control find on parse class declaration. And here, I'm going to copy this code here. I'll go back. All right, so let's look at what we have. So if we go back here, um, so we have our enum of color. So let's just kind of see how the AST was generated. So we have our AST, AST enum identifier list. We have our tokens here. These are completely unnecessary. You don't need these tokens. Um, you don't have to add them. So I have no idea why I put them there. Maybe I just forgot to ignore them. Um, and after that you have, so we're going to have two main ASTs. We're going to have each AST being an AST enum identifier because we're all basically, um, as we're processing this enum block, we're adding them to the branch of the AST enum identifier list. So they're all going to be sub ASTs as child. So when we're actually processing this on the back end, we can basically just do a for loop. We don't have to use like recursion or anything crazy to process it. So our first enum identifier, you can see here, all we have is a token called red, and this represents the first enum. After that, we have a AST enum identifier of white, and you can see here, this one actually has an expression. Um, so we're going to have our expression AST here as a sub AST of this one, and we're going to have our primary literal expression of 0x1. So yeah, that's going to be pretty much it for parsing enum declarations. So like I said, uh, the next video after this is going to be parsing expressions. And when we parse expressions, this is going to be basically the last thing that we're going to do in this parser. Um, so get ready because as you guys saw, we are pretty much right here. So we're about to start doing this. Um, if you thought it was complicated now, this is child's play. It's going to get really difficult, especially when we start writing the front end of our back end of our compiler. So yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. And as per usual, if you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comment section below. And of course, if you guys would love to help support the channel, definitely head over to my GitHub page at github.com slash androidfc slash sharp. And when you do, definitely watch star and fork the repository that is going to give this language a lot more visibility and let other developers know that this language exists also if you guys are a little bit more interested in seeing what i've been up to on the day to day as i kind of improve this language and make it a lot better definitely head over to the remastered branch um, i put some pretty wordy commits here as i mentioned earlier i pretty much started coding the virtual machine and i'm pretty much finished with post and pre-processing the compiler which believe it or not is actually i would say at this point 80 percent of the compiler is already done um so there's still a little bit of work that i need to do but that's pretty much the whole compiler um also if you guys are interested in seeing maybe stuff that i've done in the past or maybe stuff that i'm looking to add in the future uh, you can head over to the docs folder in the remastered branch and you can check out i have two main files here that are pretty interesting uh, you can check out the change list file. This is going to contain everything that I've done to the language in the past in terms of updates, bug fixes, all that jazz. 
And then of course you can check out the roadmap file. Now this one's pretty interesting. Um, I edit this one pretty frequently. Uh, in fact, I just added this yesterday. So I'm thinking about adding a pretty interesting feature to the language. Um, so this one is kind of taken from Kotlin. It's basically the concept is you have a constructor built into the initialization of the class. So meaning like when you're typing, you know, I want to create class of list of type T and it's going to have these fields and these functions. You can immediately create a constructor for that class, um, which will represent the information that you pass in. Um, and then of course you can take that constructor and you can call the base class and pass that information into that constructor if it has one. And yeah, so um, but moving forward, it's really going to be very difficult for me to add in features. I mean, I've been jamming as much crap into this language as humanly possible over the past three months. And I think at this point, I might be tapped out in terms of features that I can add because it might start to screw up some of the code that I've already shown you guys and I don't want to confuse anyone. So yeah, I'll try to figure out how to integrate all these new features in the language as we kind of move into the future. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be it for today, guys. Definitely like, comment, and subscribe if you guys like what you saw and you want to see more. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.